They're coming thick and fast. They certainly don't want me to publicize my Instagram account. Type into any YouTube comments section, see my Instagram, Bacolel, and then refresh the feed. You will find the comment is removed, instantly. Try it. In 2016, a crack theological team was sent to internet prison by a kangaroo court for a thought crime they didn't commit. These men promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade to publicize their notes from the underground. Today, still wanted by the government they survive as philosophers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the Wolfgang. Wolfgang played a big part in the undermining of the January 6th setup. Having identified the Internet theological philosophical milieu as an intentionally compartmentalized safety net to contain and isolate dissident intellectuals from the mainstream narrative, they embarked upon a rigorous campaign of public exposures, bearing this light to reveal the alt-right honeybots and IRL leave streaming networks that had been commandeered to serve the intelligence community as flypaper projects for a false flag agenda. Wolfgang, the story so far. It's been an eventful couple of years, what began in the mustard seed confines of the compartmentalized, internet philosophical theological milieu, exploded into the vine and branches of the trifecta of intelligence community lead, gang stalking smear campaigns, involving intelligence agents and assets, the southern Israelite, Alan Beckwith, Lance Cottrell of Intrepid Corporation, Baked Alaska, Augusta Sinfitis, Pimpine Pat and Underhill Securities, in association with John Bohr, a professor of entrepreneurial technology at UNLF. After parting ways with the Southern Israelite, the reformed Stoic went mainstream with some of the heavy dope, greater ratio of truth to lie admixture that was only intended to be a safety net and last chance saloon honeybot for those dissidents that fell through the holes of the conventional narrative this is the point that these events unfold from information obtained that can be provided upon inquiry we have ascertained that the southern israelite was residing in anchorage in 2016 during the time that baked alaska came to prominence on the public stage we believe it likely that Anchorage was a training ground and staging area for these interconnected intelligence operations. At the same time that the reformed Stoic exposed the Southern Israelite, effectively ending his operational aims of establishing a Waco-style compound to lure dissidents to an apocalyptic fate, he was drawing heat for exposing the alt-right setup, successfully dissuading many patriots from being caught up in the Capitol Hill flypaper project he was also drawing the ire of nasa in the form of alan beckwith for his exposure of the flat earth issue in conjunction with beckwith's forthcoming and fraudulent g extravaganza operation giant claw after a protracted campaign of harassment conducted online by lance cottrell and alan beckwith he finally discovered cottrell in his community disguised as a mailman working in concert with Underhill Securities, which can be evidenced by his confrontation of Nathaniel Fares at the Underhill Securities premises. Alan Beckwith's magnum opus, Operation Giant Claw, Sony Pictures Entertainment's latest slated G hoax, ETA 2025. Sony Pictures Entertainment are engaged in the role that was once pioneered by Lookout Mountain Laboratories, a U.S. Air Force installation on top of Laurel Canyon, that during the 60s and single quote 70s was the most sophisticated film studio in the world. Much more so than the Hollywood industry studios and were responsible for their treatments of space and nuclear bomb testing footage, neither of which have ever been proven to exist. Bill Pyle exposed. Chips. Miami Vice. Magnum P.I. I'm impressed Alan, really, just a shame you didn't make TJ Hooker. Still involved with the illusion industry, though and probably continuing the work of Lookout Mountain Laboratory with your boys at Sony? We're watching you Alan, Wolfgang never sleeps. 23, 7.
What were your motives, I wonder? A rich, successful man like yourself, why was it worth your time to wage a campaign of harassment on IP2 IRL leave streamers? The most obvious one that springs to mind, is your military industrial entertainment industry connections. Your involvement with NASA gives you a strong motivation to attempt to discredit a group of scholars who have consistently presented overwhelming evidence that contradicts the narrative of an institution that has a budget in fiscal year 2020 of $22.629 billion, which represents 0.48% of all U.S. government spending. Not to mention our exposures of the Nick Fuentes-led, America First, flypaper project, that infiltrated the IP2 community, through their asset, Baked Alaska, leading to the Capitol building SOP. Lance Cottrell of Intrepid is feeling the Wolfgang heat, see his YouTube channel Feel the Boot, he's also released the same statement on his Twitter account. Gotta love how his knee-jerk reaction is to attempt to gaslight the reformed stoic by insinuating that he's suffering from poor mental health, despite the fact that it is public record that Intrepid engages in organized and technologically assisted gaslighting, across the internet, through the tech, the anonymizer, that Lance himself invented, during his time with the other intelligence front company, Abraxas. Steered by helmsman Richard Hollis Helms that was effectively reorganized, by sleight of hand, into intrepid. The institutionalized corruption and deceit is now typical and common practice in a society that has been subverted and degraded by these very companies that exist in the private sector, as frontline proxies of the intelligence community, working for the globalist concerns of the mercantile order for the purpose of eroding the sovereignty of the nation-states, as we enter the great reset of the public-private partnerships, the hegemony of the top 1% and the rule of their multinational corporations. Wolfgang's latest stalker, we're watching you watching us, Augustus Invitus, an alt-right lawyer and a thalmite, you tick all the boxes. We expose the alt-right, Alex Jones, Jay Dyer, Nick Fuentes led, Honeypot Flypaper Project, to mobilize patriots to storm the Capitol building. The IP2 IRL live streamer, Baked Alaska who was an asset of Nick Fuentes, live streamed the event and the subsequent footage was used to imprison and vilify members of the patriot movement, casting them as terrorists and providing the excuse needed to militarize the White House. Baked Alaska, naturally, is facing no legal action being an agent provocateur and tool of the deep state. Fox can and the founder of Ecotarian, Chris Kovacs have been surveilling me for over a month now, let's see what they're about, rebuilding from chaos, trance. Order Abe Chow, self-governing AI, trance. Panopticon, that they qualify as ethical. We all know, even from the grassroots for example, when someone describes themselves in the third person as loyal and honest, etc. That's the last thing they'll be. Adedum, add to this, Dylan Pulse of Pulse Labs, AI powered, data acquisition, company, and Ona Kazaki of Foxkin. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. Psalm 112, 6. It's occurring to me that we've already won, temporarily even. We're all going to die but we'll die right and with clean conscience, having found favor in the sight of the Most High God. This is all I ever wanted. I rejected society from the outset and wanted absolutely nothing it had to offer, except the knowledge of what's done in the dark and the secret things which belong to God. After decades of marginalization on the peripheries of society, at this time of reckoning, our lives work has accrued an incontrovertible currency. Enfranchised by the truth of the witness we've borne in the face of the lies that are crumbling, right now and in real time. The path we trod was the hardest one to live by but the greatest one to die by, and this is the payoff, the fulfillment and accomplishment of lives lived right. When the chips are cashed in, at the close of business, we'll have beat the house whose odds we recognized were stacked in its favor, by not playing. 
It seems to me that our age is best characterized by those northern prophets, Hosea and Jeremiah, and I think the future holds a retreat to the Mizpah and Benjamin. The consolidation of our position and the preservation of a deposit of faith, for the future of these, the latter days, as Ezekiel the purported son of Jeremiah is supposed to have hidden the ark, incense altar and tabernacle, on the mountain of Moses. The Lamentations of Jeremiah is the book of the Bible, most pertinent to our situation at hand. Even though these are dark times, we rise to them and fulfill our potential. I've been involved in various aspects of the synarchy, for over two decades and gone public, this past six. During that time, all of the information we've been exposing has been met with derision or indifference. The tides are now becoming impossible for many to ignore. I don't expect us to have any success in opposing this current system of things, I'm more interested in building a cell-structured resistance patterned after the invisible church of St. Augustine. It seems to me that at this point, we are called to claim the mantle and lineage of the invisible church. Apostolic succession by direct lineal descent has ended as an administrative reality, post-Vatican II. The admission of women to priestly ordination by the opposite Episcopal churches rendered their holy orders null and void. Or the praxis Traditional priestly ministry and the administration of the sacraments have failed, on an institutional scale. It's now time to exercise our corporate, royal priesthood, after the order of Melchizedek and independent of the mainstream denominations that have been compromised. Instead of relying upon their traditional, institutionalized orthopraxis, we build our cell-structured resistance on an autonomous position, grounded on and legitimized by a Western Christian, doctrinal orthodoxy, under an Episcopal authority, with the aim of completing the restoration, of one holy nation, under the spirit of the law. We need to reject the post-industrial revolutionary society, returning to either a feudal period, parish model of monarchical distributism, or moving forward to a hard restorationism and theocracy, of the variety of a continuance of the Augustinian model, pursuant to a restorationist doctrine. And the sovereign nation states it requires for the nations and peoples to operate as autonomous entities. God has everything in hand. These latterly days of the Eshton are intriguing times to be alive, for those with an inquiring mind, who want to know. Revelation or Apocalypse is exposing from cover, the truth, by increment and in real time. All these supposed woes of this current system of things, are joyfully received by we the people who value truth. The internet was motivated by an inherently worldly intent, but God brings forth good from the evil of this fallen world. We're living in a time in which we are privileged to see the true face of a reprobate humanity, unveiled and revealed for all who have the eyes to see and ears to hear. Amen.